Yeah. Look. What are you going to do, Eli? Make my omelet. He's going to make an omelet. No, it's not alone. But it's not dead. <laughs> no, it's not love. Not like ours. It's not How love. one lives in here, uh, it's, it's very peaceful. It's a little bit like crawling into a rock. Bob Lynn lives in Lucerne Valley, a small town located in San Bernardino County. But it's not a typical house. It's made right from the earth below it. It was a whole mountain of dirt on the back side of the house. I thought, oh, we'll never, ever, ever go through all that. Well, we did. Lynn and his family built the entire structure using only earth, cement, plastic bags, barbed wire, and plaster. Each dome has a central living space with three smaller pods that can be used as a kitchen, restroom, and bedroom. I love my little room here. I don't know what to tell you about it. Look how tiny it is. But when you're in here, it is these little dome things like, it's like something other. Look how weird it is up there. It's like, it's funny and sensual. The home looks a bit like an igloo. Similar to the icy structures, the construction conserves energy in extreme environments. For example, the dome has no central air conditioning system to protect itself from the high desert sun. Instead, a wind scoop was designed to capture the breeze to create wind circulation inside the dome. Up here it can get very hot in the summer. When I did get around to opening them up, and this was mid-July, it did make a difference just in terms of air flowing in and out of the house. The dome also has conventional features. It has a septic tank, plumbing, running water, and electricity. The entire structure cost Blinn $65,000, including a five-acre lot, blueprints, and a building permit. This compares to the current average price of a single-family home in San Bernardino County at $170,000. A home at half that price could be important to an area that is suffering economically. In 2011, some 259 families lost their homes due to bank foreclosures. The Cal Earth kind of building process, I think, was integral to at least my idea at the time of, of being able to build something that was affordable. The California Institute of Earth, Art, and Architecture is a nonprofit organization in the city of Hesperia that developed what is called Super Adobe Technology. It's a building method that requires only earth, bags, and barbed wire. The point of this is that we want people to be able to build their own home and not have to go and you know, worry about taking out a mortgage from the bank. It should be cost effective, that it should be accessible. Shifta Khalili is the chief financial officer for Cal Earth. She says the organization's focus is to teach people how to build a shelter for themselves using an abundant and available resource, dirt. People really need to realize that we're going to run out of resources. We're going to run out of, you know, lumber to build with, and half the people in the world can't even access that type of stuff. So we can't always continue to rely on that. You know, Earth is the most abundant resource we have. Being able to teach this technique to people who have little access to other materials was the original idea of Cal Earth's founder and Shifta Khalili's late father, Nader Khalili. Well, what is there everywhere in the world? Sandbags and barbed wire. He would say, utilizing the materials of war for peaceful purposes. In 1992, he founded Cal Earth to focus on building emergency shelter villages, refugee camps, and transitional housing. Soon after, he established a working relationship with the United Nations Development Program and the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Cal Earth hosts a week-long workshop each month for people interested in building with Super Adobe technology. We really want to teach as many people as we can so that they can build for themselves and for others. Let's put ones over here, 
Before Cal Earth students build elaborate domes, they are first taught to build a small seven-foot diameter emergency sandbag shelter that serves as the basis for more construction. To be able to spot and see where there's bottlenecks. Eight years ago, Mark Harmon was a Cal Earth student. Now, he's the technical director for the organization and helps conduct the workshops. It's pretty simple. The idea is just taking earth, putting in the bags, and constructing in place. So the, the process involves starting with a level, stable surface, putting the bags in place, compacting them, which is key. The water needs to be at just the right volume to get optimum compaction. Then we use a piece of um, Velcro or barbed wire mortar between each layer. And that gives like a Velcro sticky connection between each layer. It also helps it resist earthquakes because we've got something that's tensile, something strong it, that, you can, that you can't pull apart. The plastic bags are placed in a circle that is measured by a chain compass invented by Cal Earth. That's one of our instruments that we have developed here to where it's two very elegant lengths of chain that we use, one to create the elevation and then another in the center to create the radius. That's laid down and then we lay each bag. Each little donut is just a little bit smaller until it creates a dome. So that should be a 12 foot circle. Let me chalk it, flower it. Lisa Starr attended a Cal Earth workshop. She is outlining a portion of a soon-to-be 900-square-foot triple eco-dome in Joshua Tree, California. By the end of that week, I had so much information and I was so confident taking my entire savings, my entire life savings, and, and doing this build. Star makes her living as a drum maker. When it came to a time where I had to make some decisions of how I wanted to live my life, well, I could stay here in a 3,000 square foot house and have a mortgage of, you know, three, four thousand dollars a month. That's a lot of pressure as an artist. The students completed an emergency shelter in eight hours. <laughs> a wooden frame is removed once the shell is complete. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! The real breakthrough of this is that we've built a dome in a day that's reproducible. That's not just done artistically with a, by feel, but with instruments. But the process of constructing residential domes in San Bernardino County is more extensive. Henry Rowe, a retired building official with San Bernardino County, says that the builders have to first comply with California's building and safety codes. So those are the codes that are enforced by us, and they are minimum codes. So what that means is it doesn't make it pretty to look at. It doesn't have to meet a test of aesthetics. It's just a safety standard. Most of the main structures have been built here at Cal Earth and in San Bernardino County, obviously, because we've been able to work with the local building department very successfully. The thing is that it just takes a little persistence. Obviously, it's difficult because this isn't a standard form of architecture that everyone's familiar with yet. Bob Lynn's double eco dome was the first of its kind in San Bernardino County. <laughs> it took two years for Bob Lynn's blueprints to get approved. After revisions were made to them, he was granted his building permit, but Henry Rowe says he couldn't start building right away. There's a lot of stuff that has to be done on a vacant lot before you can start building, no matter what kind of structure you're going to build. So you have to provide for fire protection, you have to provide for water, you have to have a property that can be served by a sewage disposal system. First, the building department has the owners send their soil to a laboratory to measure its crush strength. We went through a process and it took some time because this, this soil this, uh, that we have out here is, uh, as one fellow local grader called it, well, you have poof dirt, he said. You just 
store it up and it poofs away. So we put, uh, we tried pea gravel, mixed it with a proportion of this, added cement, and uh, then the soil lab said, yeah, you're good to go. Once the mixture is ready, it's stuffed into long plastic bags that Cal Earth manufactured to make the filling process easier. People say, you know, but your bags are not eco-friendly, they're made of plastic, and, and yes, we agree, you know, obviously plastic is not ideal, but it works for our purposes and it maintains the integrity of the building for hundreds of years. The amount of time it takes to complete the large domes depends on the owner's financial ability to hire labor. Starr says she expects to invest $130,000 in the construction of her triple ecodome. Of that, $30,000 is invested in hiring a five-person crew. They sleep on site and are expected to complete the shell in 10 to 12 weeks. If anyone were going to step into this and think that they can do this because it's like the cheapest way to do it, it's not the way to go. Mark Rappert also completed a Cal Earth workshop. He's in the process of building a double eco-dome. I needed a place to live when I retire. The whole idea of how it's built and how long it'll last and what I think is a, a smaller impact on the earth is what made the decision. Rappert began building his double eco-dome in 2007, but it hasn't been completed. The county enforced a regulation that caused him a financial setback. According to county regulations, a structure must be a minimum of 750 square feet if the plot of land is larger than two acres. Well, it doubled the cost of building the place, the materials and digging the hole to start construction and all that stuff. So I was hoping to be able to build the whole thing, you know, in, a, in six months, but it didn't work out that way. I think for anybody who's done this, and for anybody who would like to do it, I think the key is community. Having a, in your social environment, people who will support you and, uh, and work for free. Otherwise, I don't know how you do it. Lynn has now been living in his double eco-dome for close to a year with his son. See here. Even though we're in the United States and it did cost us far more than we expected, it still is a, a marvelous alternative to the ordinary uh, stick houses. I feel like I'm part of that leadership with my crew and everyone else in this way that we are the earth builders. You know, I'd love to see some low income housing built um, in this way because. And not only built in this way, but built by the people who are going to live in it. You know, hindsight is, as they say, 2020. And now that I'm here, now that we've gone through the, the headache, done the work, you begin to understand in a deeper way really what this kind of building really, can really mean to people. It's a light lifting experience.